So our first example of Laplace transformation is to find out the transformation of 1. That's right, we have taken the function f of t to be equal to 1 for all t, specifically from 0 to infinity. So the way we approach it is a bit unusual. So instead of directly substituting the infinity in the definition, I'm sure if you remember that L of 1, according to the definition, is from integration from 0 to infinity, e to the power negative st, and then f of t, which is 1. If we multiply anything with 1, it just remains the same, then dt. The infinity here, we want to be a little bit crafty about it because the infinities are dangerous to deal with. So instead, what we are going to do, we are going to take a limit. And we are going to say, all right, our integration is actually performed from 0 to p, which doesn't seem so ominous. And then we will take the uh, limit p tends to infinity. And everything else remains the same. So we can go ahead without any worry and just integrate this thing out. Well, of course, if you integrate e to the power negative st, then you end up with e to the power negative st again, but this time divided by negative s. So that's the integration process, and of course you'll have to plug in uh, the limits, which is t equals to 0 to t equals to p, so it will become a function of p, and then you take the limit uh, for p to go to infinity. So if we substitute it, then what do we get? Well, we get uh, e to the power negative sp, right? Below we have negative s, and then we take negative 1, because e to the power negative 0 is actually 1, and we're still taking the limit to take p to infinity. Well, under this limit, only this term is affected, and if we do take the limit, this goes to 0. So all we are left with is 1 over s, provided that s is greater than 0. So that's it. Our result is L of 1 equal to 1 over s, provided that s is greater than 0. Our second example is a function f of t equal to t. That's an interesting example, but also straightforward. What we're going to do is to write down the equation, which is L of t equal to integration from 0 to infinity a to the power negative st times t dt. Well, of course, like before, what we're going to do is to change this integral to a limit. So we integrate from 0 to p and t e to the power negative st dt. Now, this is the time to employ what we call the integration by parts. So if you do remember, the integration of u dv is equal to u v minus v d u. And for our purpose, u is t and v, well, we don't have v, but we have dv. This is equal to e to the power negative s t d t. Well, if this is the case, then we can find out v and v is simply the antiderivative of e to the power negative st, which is e to the power negative st divided by negative s. If we employ that, what do we obtain? We obtain the Laplace transform of t is equal to limit going from p to infinity, and then the integration by parts. So at the beginning, we have u v. So t times e to the power negative st divided by minus s. And then, of course, then we have v du. du dt gives us 1. So du is just 1 into dt. Well, v du is simply 
a to the power negative st divided by s squared. All right, and we have to take the limit from zero to p. So once again, if we substitute in the limiting values into this thing over here, so at the beginning, if you plug in p, what you have is p times e to the power negative sp divided by minus s and then we have minus zero and then minus e to the power negative st divided by s squared and then plus well e to the power zero is one so one over s squared now if you take p tends to infinity, well this here should be p, sp, this term goes to 0 and e to the power negative sp grows greater than just p, so this whole term goes to 0 and we are left with 1 over s squared. So the Laplace transformation of t is simply 1 over s squared provided that s is greater than 0. In this example, I'd like to find out the Laplace transformation of this function e to the power a t. Now this is interesting for a couple of reasons that I shall explain later, but this result is very, very effective. Mostly effective in order to find out some other results, but this is also going to be like the previous two examples an execution of the brute force method that means just simply integrating uh, whatever we have been given at this stage so the laplace transformation of e to the power a t what it should be simply is zero to infinity and then e to the power negative s t times e to the power a t dt and of course, like before, we shall put it as a limit p tends to infinity and to go from 0 to p and then e to the power negative s minus a times t dt. Well, the integration of this is very straightforward apart from writing down the limit p tends to infinity at the beginning we find that the integration is basically e to the power negative s minus a into t divided by negative s minus a. This is just like the integration of e to the power negative s t dt which was in the Laplace transformation of 1. And of course we'll have to write down the limit so t goes from 0 to p. Well, if you substitute that, what do we find? We find t is 0, which is in the lower limit, and because of this minus sign, we can write the lower limit before the higher limit, and so we write limit p tends to infinity. We absorb the minus sign, so the lower limit becomes the upper limit, so we have 1 divided by s minus a, and then of course, if it is if t is equal to p, then we have e to the power negative s minus a times p over s minus a. So if you take the limit, this contribution goes to zero, and we end up with one over s minus a. And of course, uh, this is applicable for s greater than a. Interestingly enough, this limit this Laplace transformation of e to the power at resembles a lot with the Laplace transformation of just one. And as we'll see later, this is because of a property which is known as the translation or shifting property.